Hey there, and welcome back as we continue our tour of the Substitute Wonders. Last week, we looked at Abu Simbel as a replacement for the Statue of Zeus. This week, we're going to head east to India. We're going to be replacing the Colossus of Rhodes. The Colossus of Rhodes only stood for 57 years, and even though it was massive at a height of 32 meters, it still spent most of its life laying in ruins. The Great Stupa, on the other hand, is still standing to this day. Great Stupa is located at a site called Sanchi in Madhya Pradesh, which is the state of India. The site of Sanchi contains several Buddhist monuments, with the Great Stupa possibly being the oldest and most well-known Buddhist monument in India. The Great Stupa was possibly ordered for construction by the Mauryan Emperor Ashok. The Mauryan Empire started sometime around 321 BCE and lasted to 185 BCE, and it was the first empire in India to almost have fully conquered the Indian subcontinent. The first Mauryan Emperor, Chandragupta, actually expanded his empire out into Punjab, where Alexander the Great once ruled. He ruled the empire until his death in 297 BCE. Then his grandson Ashoka took over the family business. <laughs> He ruled from 265 to 238 BCE, or because ancient history is messy and we can't have anything nice, he may have ruled from 273 to 232 BCE, we're not really certain. Even though we may not know when he ruled exactly, we do know that he embraced Buddhism and he embraced it hard. We actually know quite a bit about his reign from the stone pillars that he had erected all across the empire. These stone pillars were inscribed with his edicts and rules that he set forth for his people, and they're considered some of the oldest deciphered text from India. During Ashoka's rule, the kingdom stretched to Iran and most of the Indian subcontinent. In the early years of his rule, he was thought to be rather brutal, but this all came to an end when he launched a campaign against the Kingdom of Kalinga in 260 BCE. He would conquer the Kingdom of Kalinga, but this came at cost for him. He decided that he was done with war altogether, and he adopted Buddhism. Instead of conquering people through military force, much like in the game of civilization when you're trying to get a religious or cultural victory, he started sending out Buddhist emissaries and commissioning fine art to help expand his empire. It's during his reign in the 3rd century BCE that we believe he commissioned the Great Stupa. It's thought he selected the location because of its vicinity next to Vidisha. The city of Vidisha was originally called Besnagar and wasn't renamed to Vidisha until 1956. It was first mentioned in Sanskrit epics dating back to the 3rd century BCE. And at this time, the city was known for being a place of religious worship, commerce, and even a political center. The Mauryan Empire came to an end during the 2nd century BCE when the new dynasty, the Sangha, took over. Pushmithra was the first ruler for the Sangha dynasty and during his rule, he persecuted the Buddhists, but even though he persecuted them, they still flourished. During the 2nd century BCE, the Great Stupa was damaged, but it was later repaired and added on to. We don't know which one of the Sangha rulers repaired and added on to the Great Stupa, because after Pushmitra's death, there isn't a lot known about the Sangha dynasty. Then at some point during the 1st century BCE, the new dynasty, the Satahana, added on to what the Sangha dynasty had already done. So what is a Stupa? It's a very important structure for Buddhist beliefs. They house important relics like pieces of the Buddha and other saintly persons. Persons. However, the shape of the stupa actually has its origins in pre-Buddhist beliefs. They take their appearance from burial mounds found around India. The great stupa is considered the defining look for what a stupa should look like. But as time has gone on and other cultures started to practice Buddhism, they started to change the look of the stupa to fit into their cultures. The traditional stupa is characterized in part by a half dome, but in places like Java and Indonesia, they started to take on a terraced temple look. In China, Korea, and Japan, they started to model theirs to look like pagodas. The relic chamber of a stupa was originally meant to hold pieces of the the Buddha, but over time they started to diversify and change what was actually considered a relic. They started to allow such things as sacred text. The Great Stupa stands at a height of 17 meters and is 37 meters wide. As I've mentioned before, the Great Stupa is considered the traditional style for a stupa. The half dome is made of stone and it sits on a stone base. The half dome is considered to be the heavens enclosing the earth. On top of the dome, there's a squared railing. This is thought to represent the world mountain, which is an integral part to the Buddhist beliefs. Inside the railing, there's what looks to be a fountain. This is actually called the Chatra. It's to represent the three jewels of Buddhism. At the base of the dome, there's a circular terraced walkway. Worshippers walk clockwise around the dome while praying. The Great Stupa is surrounded by a low wall with four gateways, each facing a cardinal direction. These gateways are ceremonial in purpose and called Taranas. They're known for being carved with elaborate sculptures, and the Taranas at the Great Stupa are considered to be some of the finest in the world. Each gateway is made up of two squared posts, and each one has a capital. The capitals hold up a lintel of sorts, and each gateway is heavily decorated with the events of Buddha's life. But one of the most remarkable things about each of the gateways is that they're inscribed with the names of the donors that helped donate to the stupa. Then for some reason during the 12th century CE, the site was just abandoned. We don't know why, 
but it was left to be overgrown. That was until 1818, when General Henry Taylor stumbled across the site. He started to document his findings. However, it wasn't until 1881 that any of the restoration and excavations actually started to take place at the site. Then at some point between 1881 and 1919, the Indian Archaeological Survey took over the site. It's said that they brought a whole new level of organization to the excavations. The restoration and cleaning of the site was finally completed in 1919 under Sir John Marshall. Once the site was fully cleared, they found around 50 Buddhist monuments, and the site was added to the UNESCO World Heritage in 1989. Today it's maintained by the Archaeological Survey of India. Why should the Great Stupa replace the Colossus of Rhodes? Well, in my opinion, it may not have been as domineering as the Colossus. But when the Colossus fell, they just left it there, lying in ruins. The Great Stupa was damaged and repaired and added onto. And even though, yes, it was eventually forgotten to time, when it was rediscovered, it was cleaned up and it's become an integral part of Buddhist beliefs again. The Colossus, however, didn't seem important enough to the ancient Greeks to actually either stand it up or even document it much. I want to thank you all for watching and I want to thank the patrons. If you want to become a supporter and help the channel grow and become part of a larger community, then consider heading over to Patreon. 